So software, uh, you're not going to get far without software in anything that's got computer in its name, CNC, computer, numerical com control. Um, there's three sort of broad parts, three areas to the software that you need. You're going to need something that you can draw your designs in, that you can create your work pieces in. You need another piece of software that will convert those lines and those shapes into individual tool paths, literally telling the CNC how high it needs to be, what speed it's running at, where it needs to be, how deep it's cutting, that kind of thing. And then of course you need uh, to generate a code, a, a G code, that your CNC software itself can uh, understand and can run. So the CNC software that literally runs the machine typically comes with whichever board you're using on your CNC machine. The other two parts typically come together, CAD, CAM software you might have heard of. Uh, and the fine folks at Vetric have very kindly given me access uh, to some of their software. Uh, Vetric Aspire uh, is one of their software products. They also make uh, a number of other uh, software applications specifically for CNC, uh, Cut. 2D is one and VCarve Pro is a very popular one. Aspire is kind of top of the tree, very high-end software. I, I feel a little bit like a learner driver who's just been handed the keys to a Ferrari and uh, <laughs> we'll see where we go with this. But let's jump straight in uh, and have a, a quick play and see what we can come up with. Uh, Vectric software is on a Windows PC only, so please excuse me if I'm a bit sort of all thumbs because I haven't used a Windows box for a long time. I've had to dust this one off, which is why it's humming quietly in the background. And again, please forgive my uh, old school screen capture as well. So we're, we're clearing out, leveling up, plowing, if you like, the uh, spoiler board. So we'll start by creating a new file here. Uh, I've actually got the dimensions in already. It's 530 wide and 520 uh, high and 18 mil thick, and it's made of MDF. So we'll accept those. And the first thing we need to do is just sort of, we're basically just going to cover the whole area. So what we'll do, we'll just draw a rectangle. And we'll start at the bottom left down here. And we'll go all the way up to the top right. Whoops. Up here. We'll apply that. And then we can go over here to our uh, we just check the material setup. That's okay. And we're just going to use what they call a pocket toolpath. So we're not going all the way through, that's a profile. Uh, we're just using a pocket where you sort of mill out a section. So what have we got? We've got an eighth of an inch bit selected, so that won't go far, will it? Uh, let's use a one inch end mill. Is what we've got. Oops. There's there's lots of potential for you to fiddle with the settings in high-end software like this. I'm just going to accept the defaults that it comes up with uh, because I think generally speaking they'll be good enough for what we want. We're set to one and a half mil deep, which is what we want. Uh, that's all okay. We'll just accept all the defaults. Pocket two, and we'll calculate. No vector selected. Okay. Let's select those and do that again. And there we are. That gives us a 3D idea of what the object is going to look like. If we go back to the 2D tab here, that gives us our toolpath. And the other thing you can do is preview the toolpath. It plays a simulated sort of sped up video preview of how the tool's going to cut. Pretty cool. So now what we need to do, we need to save that. Uh, here. We'll save that as B. 
obviously we can save that onto a thumb drive, get that into my laptop and get it back across uh, to the workshop. Now there's one other thing I want to do and that's just to give ourselves uh, just a, a row of grid lines just for positioning smaller work pieces so, that, so I can get them sort of roughly square if they're not against one of the edges. One of the reasons we also mill uh, the spoiler board surface like this is to give us a square edge to, to work to. So if we just put a row of, of lines in to a, a half a dozen or so from the centre either side uh, and the way we'll do that is by actually using a rectangle tool and what we'll do we'll make it 500 wide by a uh, it's an eighth of an inch bit. A lot of um, CNC tooling is in imperial measurements, it's curious. An eighth of an inch bit, which is 3.175 millimeters. Let me use our move tool. Let's get that up to the center. And then it's simply a question of copying and pasting that. sure there are better ways to do that but we can also select all of those and again it's going to be another pocket tool path uh, we don't want that we want the 1 8 end mill again we're just going to accept the defaults uh, we'll go to one half mil deep again Right there, so there we are. That's how it's going to look. And again, we can save that toolpath as spoiler grid. So that's a very quick kind of whistle-stop tour uh, over this very sophisticated software that I'm using in an incredibly basic way as the series progresses. Perhaps I'll get to use it uh, a bit more advanced, but for now I'm going to get these onto a thumb drive, get those back in the workshop, and we'll see if we can get that uh, spoiler board surfaced.